Hi friends, I hope you are all doing good. A very happy Deepavali to all of you. So in this video, uh, we will be covering the Sanjeev Nibuti or Superfast Division of Customs Topics. So we will cover only the important topics of Customs. Let us not discuss all the topics which are there. Let us cover important topics because Customs are uh, for your examination. It comes only for say 10 or uh, 20 marks maximum. So let us start our discussion on Customs. Okay, customs law. Again, once again, very happy Deepavali to you all. Hope you are all doing good and you are all safe. Please make sure that you keep proper care of your health and please study well. Revise, revise and revise. Customs. So first, let us be, uh, understand the basic uh, def uh, definitions or points which are there under customs. So Article 246, uh, 246 of our Constitution, which is there in the seventh schedule uh, of our uh, which has a seventh schedule, which uh, wherein uh, schedule uh, in seventh schedule they have a union list which talks about levy of custom duty. Entry number 83 talks about levy of custom duty. Uh, for the levy of custom duty, they have formed an act called as Customs Act 1962. Uh, which extends to whole of India, including the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Now, what do you mean by adjudicating authority? Adjudicating authority means any authority uh, which is competent to pass any order or decision under this act, but it shall not include, adjudicating authority shall not include CBIC, Commissioner of uh, uh, Custom Appeals and SESTAC, that is Appellate Tribunal, C Customs and Service Tax, Customs, Customs Excise Service Tax Appellate Tribunal. Then what do you mean by assessment? Assessment means determine. Assessment normally means what? Determining the tax liability. What is the tax liability which you are liable to? What is the tax amount which you are liable to? The determination of tax liability is called as assessment. A determination of uh, determination of duty of any goods or amount of duty of tax which is required to be paid. And it includes assessment includes provisional assessment, self assessment, reassessment, or any other type of assessment which is done under this act where the duty assessed is nil where the duty assist is nil so next what is baggage sir baggage is the uh, baggage is nothing but the ba bag which you are carrying with you whenever you are traveling this baggage will also include what sir the baggage will also include the unaccompanied baggage baggage which you are not carrying with you but it shall not include motor vehicle then what do you mean by coastal goods so in case the goods are going through sea routes from one place in india to another place in india then they are called as coastal goods these goods are called as coastal goods say for example from mumbai to mangalore port it is going then what do you mean by convince convince includes convince is an inclusive definition whatever you generally understand by a convince is a convince apart from that convince shall also include vessel motor vehicle and aircraft vessel aircraft and vehicle what is customs area air customs area is the custom station the area where the custom stations uh, is there the area of custom station it also includes any area where the imported or exported goods are ordinarily kept before their clearance uh, clearances wherever the goods are ordinarily kept before clearances what do you mean by dutyable goods under customs any goods on which duty is liable to be paid and you are paying duty on those is called as uh, dutyable goods any goods which are chargeable to duty and on which the duty is not yet paid export means what taking out of india from a place in india if you are taking something outside india from a place in india export foreign going vessel imported definition Important definition foreign going vessel means any going which is going uh, any vessel which is going outside India is a foreign going vessel foreign going vessel is a foreign going vessel or an aircraft uh, means a foreign going vessel or an aircraft from any port or airport in India to, to any port or airport outside India if it is going from any port in India to any port outside India then it is foreign going vessel foreign going vessels shall also include foreign naval vessels which are doing naval exercises in Indian uh, waters then any vessel which is engaged in fishing or any other operation in the outside the territorial waters and any vessel which is going to a place outside India for whatsoever purpose very important definition goods goods means what sir goods again here they have given an inclusive definition meaning whatever you generally understand by goods is goods apart from that goods will also include vessel aircraft and vehicle baggage stores currency negotiable instruments and 
any other kind of mobile property any other kind of mobile property sir under gst uh, the currency and negotiable instruments or money and money, uh, securities are not treated as goods sir but here it is treated yes under customs they are treated as goods but however there is no custom duty levied sir then why are they treated as goods they are treated as goods only for the purpose of declaration only for the purpose of declaration meaning if you are coming from uh, a place outside india or if you are going to a place outside india you will have to declare what is the money which is carried by you then what do you mean by import sir import means bringing into india from a place outside india imported goods means the goods which has been brought to india from a place outside india and which are not yet cleared for home consumption the delivery of which is not yet taken imported goods means go any goods brought into india from a place outside india but does not include the goods which has been cleared for home consumption what do you mean by india sir what is india only the land region or something else india includes territorial waters of india meaning whatever you generally understand by india is india that is this land region apart from that india will also include territorial waters territorial waters means what sir up to 12 nautic miles under customs india definition is very important because import will be treated only when the goods cross the ter once the goods cross the territorial water the importation process will start and export i will consider something as an export only if the goods are crossing the territorial waters only if the goods go outside the territorial waters export will be treated so what happens if a ship, a ship sinks inside the territorial water only i have exported few goods now uh, before crossing the territorial water the ship sinks inside the territorial water only is it considered as export no it is not considered as export very important case law is there which they are, uh, they repeatedly ask in your examination rajendra dying and sipping with anyways we will cover those things now indian customs waters again an important topic for uh, theory question they ask normally about what is the significance of indian customs water first what is indian customs water sir now we all know that india extends only till what territorial waters of india now indian custom water means the water which is extending up to exclusive economic zone exclusive economic zone means what sir see up to 12 nautic miles it is territorial waters up to 24 nautic miles it is continental shelf then up to 200 nautic miles from the baseline this area is called as exclusive economic zone meaning our country india has exclusive right on the economic resources which are available at that particular location whatever this area uh, until this area exclusive economic zone we have exclusive rights on the economic resources which are available over there so indian custom waters which is there it extends to this place up till the exclusive economic zone indian customs waters exceeds sir what is this uh, why why is it significant sir indian custom waters extends up to 200 optic miles from the uh, baseline why is it significant it is significant because say for example you would have seen always say if there is a no entry wherein uh, traffic police officers if you see that if there is a no entry now we all know that we are not supposed to enter this no entry okay now the police officer will not be standing at the beginning of the no entry he will stand somewhere in between why sir so that if you are entering he can catch you similarly similarly the territorial waters up to territorial waters it is considered as india but the custom officer has given powers he has the powers up to the exclusive economic zone meaning if he is able to identify any smuggling activities happening outside the territorial waters if he sees that any prohibited goods or punishable goods are been uh, offenses are been carrying place in this particular area then he has the right to catch that person so what is the significance of indian custom officer very important if an officer of customs has a reason to believe that if the officer of customs has what sir if the officer of customs has a reason to believe that any person in india or within indian customs water has committed any offence which is punishable under customs law he may be arrested who may be arrested that person who has committed offence may be arrested also any goods can be confiscated vessel may be uh, goods can be confiscated vessels may be stopped in the indian customs water if the found, if the same are found to be used in smuggling activity if they are doing any smuggling activity outside india that is outside the territorial waters but within the indian customs water then also the officer has right to stop them uh, further prohibited goods can also be confiscated if they are brought in the indian custom waters so there are few goods which are prohibited you cannot bring them to india sir they are not bringing it to india sir it is available in indian customs water only no sir still they can confiscate yes still they can confiscate still they can confiscate very important significance of indian customs water then what do you mean by transit goods there is two uh, 
two types of uh, uh, goods under customs wherein transit goods and transit goods transit goods means if the goods are reaching the destination port in the same ship it is transit if the goods are reaching the destination port in an another ship that is called as transit sir i didn't understand this point for example the goods uh, say from africa you have imp uh, few goods are coming okay from africa few goods are coming now from africa the goods a b c are coming out of these goods a b c goods number a and b has been unloaded in india in mumbai port and in the same ship goods number c which is there is going to australia in the same ship goods c is going to australia however in india once the goods are unloaded a and b which are unloaded in india out of this goods b which is there no that is going to china after being unloaded in india this is transferred to another goods another ship sorry another ship and these goods are going to china so here goods a will be called as imported goods for india why it has been imported to india and which is uh, used for the purpose of india only or some importer in india goods b which is there goods b has been loaded to another ship and that other ship is going to china these goods are called as transship goods they are called as what transship goods and good c is going in the same ship to the final destination which is australia it is going to the final destination in the same ship that is australia this c is called as transit goods c is called as transit goods so transit means what in the same ship you are going from the port a port of exporting country to the final destination port though you are stopping at intermediate port though the vessel is stopping in india the good c is not unloaded in india the good c is not unloaded in india so these goods will be treated as transit goods goods which is reaching the destination port in the same ship and goods which reaches the destination post port in an another ship is called as transit goods so transit goods they are the goods which reach the destination port in the same convenience trans uh, transit goods and transshipment means the goods which reach the destination post in another convenience other than its original vessel so other than its original vessel or original convenience from which it has come it is going in some other vessel stores means what sir stores means the goods which are used in the ship or for the ship means any goods used for vessel or aircraft and includes see when i am using the word ship does uh, that does not mean that it is applicable only for vessel it is applicable for all the types of convenience okay it is applicable for ships also and aircraft also so stores means the goods which are used in a vessel or an aircraft and includes any fuel or spare parts and any other article or equipment whether or not which is for immediate fitting purpose who is person in charge whoever is uh, say captain of a ship uh, aeroplane pilot of an aeroplane driver of a um, bus or conductor uh, driver of a truck or a conductor of a train etc prohibited goods prohibited goods means what prohibited see there is a difference between prohibited goods and there is a difference between what prohibited goods and goods which can be imported subject to some condition prohibited goods are the goods which cannot be imported at all meaning you cannot import they are strictly prohibited they are strictly prohibited you cannot import these goods at all these are prohibited goods but if you are allowed to import few goods if you are allowed to import few goods subject to some condition then they will be called as goods which are imported through some con uh, So through satisfaction of some condition they are not called as prohibited goods they are not prohibited goods prohibited goods extremely prohibited you cannot import at all then important okay i'll read the definition prohibited goods means any goods import or export of which is subject to prohibition under this act or in the or any other law for the time been in force but it shall not include any goods which can be imported or export, exported on fulfillment of some condition next Section twelve is the charging section under customs. Section twelve is what? Section twelve is the charging sections under customs law. Under customs law, the charging section is what, sir? Under customs law, the charging section is section twelve. Very important because most of the case laws are based on section twelve only. What is this section twelve uh, telling? Except as otherwise provided in this act or any other law for the time being in force. the duties of customs shall be levied at such rates as may be specified under customs tariff act 
or any other law for the time being forced on goods which are imported into India or exported from India. Meaning what? You will have to pay custom duty. See, except as otherwise provided in this act. Meaning if there is something else or if there is any provision in this act which is telling you not to levy custom duty, don't levy, follow that provision. Or if there is any other provision in any other law or any other act which is telling you not to levy custom duty, don't levy custom duty. So, except as otherwise provided in this act or any other law for the time may enforce, you will have to pay duties of customs on the rate which is specified in Customs Tariff Act, Custom Tariff Act 1975 on goods which are imported into India or exported from India. Meaning, so whatever import you are doing, if these goods which are imported, are it men are they mentioned in this custom tariff area? Is there any rate specified? Yes, sir. Pay custom duty. If these goods which are imported, is there no uh, has have they specified any rate for these goods? No, sir. Then don't pay custom duty. Goods which you are exporting, have they specified the rate for these goods which you are exporting? Yes, sir. Pay custom duty. If they are not specified, then don't pay any custom duty. Now there are important case laws. Important case law will. Uh, take uh, with regard to goods import export etc acc cement we would have all seen advertisement of acc cement associated cement company limited supreme court judgment is there what this company had done, uh, done was this company has imported this acc limited has imported few designs drawings uh, technical materials etc now these designs which they have imported though they were in a paper form so the design was in a on a paper the design was made in a paper and this paper was uh, bought to india this paper on which the design was there was bought to india supreme court held that this design which you have imported because it is in a paper format because it is a it is in a paper format it is now movable because it is movable it will be considered as goods and you will have to pay custom duty then vm salgaukar vm salgaukar vm salgaukar means what sir uh, vm salgaukar supreme court judgment says now sometimes what may happen is few ships are very big which cannot reach the indian port they cannot come and park itself to indian port so what is done a smaller ships are sent to these bigger ships and these goods are unloaded from the bigger ship to the smaller ship and this smaller ship will get these goods to India that is the uh, port region so there are stores used what say for example fuels etc which is used in this smaller ships now these smaller shipper men, uh, uh, ships are called as transshippers they are called as transshippers so the question is whether whatever stores is used by them who sir transshippers is it subject to custom duty or not was told in this particular uh, case law so what is uh, what did they tell no sir it is not because they are exempt as the, uh, it is considered as foreign going vessel, whatever provisions are applicable for a foreign going vessel, same provisions will be made applicable to them also. Transshippers are also treated as an ocean going vessel or a foreign going vessel. Hence, stores consumed by small vessels would be exempt from custom duty. So they will be exempt. Then, Tirpati Udyog Limited. There is one more case law called as Tirpati Udyog Limited. Beautiful case law again, sir whatever goods are sent from domestic say uh, domestic tariff area to an SCZ location is treated as custom sir similarly is the sale made by SCZ location to a domestic tariff area meaning what in say in Bangalore there is one area which is called as which is called as SCZ location and there is another area which is domestic tariff area meaning what there the normal uh, provisions of the law is applicable normal taxes etc you have to pay now whatever sales is made by this domestic tariff uh, this scz location to the domestic tariff area will be will it be treated as export will it be treated as export they said no 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 this is nonsense i will not treat it as export because if you want to call something as an export the goods should go outside the territorial waters it should go outside india goods are in india only here so i will not call it as exports under customs see they are treated as zero rated supplies under gst that is all uh, that is all something which is covered under gst but here under ex, uh, under G, uh, customs it will not be considered as export very important case law custom duty can be levied so what is uh, what is the crux custom duty can be levied only on the goods which is imported into or exported beyond the territorial waters of india and is not attracted for supply which is made by a dta to a now, whatever unit is located in domestic tariff area 
to an uh, unit located in SCZ or YC versa. Then, Apar Industries Limited and Garden Seals Milk uh, Limited. Very important case law because this case law actually told when a custom duty uh, is required to be paid. See, charging section says if goods are imported into India or exported from uh, India, you should pay customs duty. Now, India is extended up to territorial waters. So, sir, does it mean that once a ship is crossing the territorial waters, if the ship sinks in this territorial waters only before reaching the Indian port, should I pay custom duty as per the definition, verbatim reading of the law? Yes, you should pay. However, Supreme Court made it clear. See, this is nonsense. A person is losing the goods. A person has not received anything in his hand. How can you treat it as an import? How can you treat it as an import? So, Supreme Court made the provisions very clear by this judgment. Apar Industries, Garden Ship, uh, 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 Garden Silk Mills Limited, Kirin Shipping, etc. All these case laws. What is the case law telling? Supreme Court held that import of goods will commence. What, sir? Import will commence when they the, the, uh, the when they cross the territorial waters, but it continues and is completed only when they become part of the mass of the goods in the country. Meaning what? Okay, Mr. Custom Officer. See, importation will start once the goods have crossed the territorial waters once they have crossed importation is started it is not that he has imported yes import has started but i will call that import has been completed only when the goods become part of india only when they reach indian mass and they become part of normal uh, mass of india that is mass of india within the country then the taxable event what is a taxable event will be reached at the time when the goods reaches the customs barriers and bill of entry for the home consumption is filed once the goods uh, goods reaches the custom barriers or customs port customs barriers is nothing but the gate of custom uh, port so once it reaches the customs uh, barriers and a bill of entry is filed by the uh, importer only then importation is said to be or taxable event will arise and you will have to pay the taxes then very important case law normally they keep on asking this case law rajendra dying and printing mills supreme court export occurs when the goods cross the uh, cross beyond the territorial waters of india meaning what this in this case what has happened was a person had exported few goods he had exported few goods and he had claimed for duty drawback or refund under customs he had claimed uh, he had asked for duty drawback or refund but what happened was before these goods crossing the territorial waters of india this ship sank inside the territorial waters only the ship sank inside the territorial waters now the the custom officer is telling no 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 i am not going to pay you any refund i am not going to give you any refund because there is no export which has happened supreme court also told the same thing export is uh, i will consider something as an export only when they cross territorial waters if the ship has sunk inside the territorial waters no export has happened since no export has happened no duty drawback or refund will be given to you okay then uh, significance of indian customs order is discussed then duty liability in special uh, circumstances what whether i should pay custom duty or not there are a few some uh, different special circumstances under those circumstances whether the custom duty is required to be paid if yes how we'll see section 13 talks about pil pilferage what is pilferage just petty theft theft in small quantities is called as pilferage now in case there is any pilferage in case there is any pilferage then no duty is required to be paid for such pilferage no duty is required to be paid for such pilferage now proof of pilferage is not required to be given it is not necessary uh, necessary however what is important is if pilferage is found before the goods are cleared for from customs only then the imp uh, now pilferage is done and he has found it before clearance then yes you can give refund you can give a refund meaning what pilferage pilferage officer is doing inspection you have imported goods officer has done inspection officer is finding that there is no pilferage there is no pilferage there is no theft happening so he will tell mr dilip you will have to pay 100 percent of the tax liability but when you are clearing the goods for home consumption you found that there are few goods which is missing in such case i will not apply section 13 you will have to claim refund for those goods refund for those goods Pilferage should occur after unloading but before the proper officer makes an order for clearance. Once a proper officer has 
verified the goods if he finds that there is no stealing which has happening there is no pilferage which has happening then this provision will not uh, be applicable then sir what will happen sir in such case you, uh, in such case you can claim refund when will pilferage will uh, be applicable after unloading of the goods before inspection if some petty theft is happening then pilferage provision is applicable then whatever goods are derelict jet sam float sam brick they shall all be treated as imported goods they shall all be treated as imported goods if they are brought into india or they are coming to india by themselves what is derelict sir where a vessel or a cargo which is abandoned into the sea without any hope of recovering say for example titanic titanic has uh, sunk and uh, uh, someone uh, goes say some submarine is there under water and it finds it and it uh, gets few items say jewelry items or whatever is there if it gets few items from the titanic to india now when the person is getting some items from titanic to india that will be called as uh, the actually the entire ship is called as uh, derelict now that particular goods which are brought into india they will be treated as uh, taxable under customs they uh, you will have to pay custom duty then jet sam now jet sam is to reduce the weight of the ship now weight of the ship is increasing that is there are chances of a ship getting sunk to reduce the weight of the ship the goods are thrown into the ship a uh, ship if these uh, these goods are brought into india they will be treated on par with other imported goods then float sam if there is any goods which are thrown into the ship and they by themselves they are coming to india by floating they will also be treated on par with imported goods and wreck any goods sorry any cargo or a vessel or any property which is cast to the seashore if which comes to the seashore automatically by tidal waters after the ship is wrink then they are called as uh, wrink wrink also shall be treated as uh, on par with imported goods then abatement of duty important abatement of duty on damaged or deteriorated goods if there are goods which if there are any goods which are damaged or deteriorated which if there are any goods meaning what there is no theft happening see theft pilferage will be applicable when only if the goods are lost in small quantity meaning those goods are not available at all i had imported 1000 power banks in that 10 power banks are stolen 10 power banks are stolen now pilferage will apply but this 10 power banks which are this i had imported 1000 power banks out of which 10 power banks are damaged Be, at the time of unloading or any uh, uh, because of any reason these goods which are unloaded have been damaged now they are damaged in such case i will give you abatement of duty you don't have to pay duty to such extent of damage the extent of damage which is caused by you the extent of deterioration which has happened to such extent don't pay any custom duty abatement is available on imported goods damaged or deterior uh, deteriorated at any time before or during unloading after unloading but before examination or warehouse goods has been damaged in the warehouse what is the abatement sir what is the duty which i don't have to pay the duty which you don't have to pay is what is the value of damage which you have suffered divided by what the value of goods before damage that will be the ratio into the duty on damaged goods now what is the duty which was liable to be paid by you on these goods if were if they were not damaged multiply that with a proportion a ratio what is that ratio sir value of damage which is incurred divided by the value of goods before damage that will give you the abatement which you are going to get remission of duty now section 13 was applicable when there is an pilferage and this pilferage should happen after unloading but before inspection section 23 talks about remission of duty you don't have to pay any duty the duty payment will be remitted government is telling i don't want your duty only if the goods are lost or destruction uh, destructed if the goods are lost now goods are lost means i had imported 1000 power banks which had come in five different boxes five different boxes 200 power banks in each boxes it has come so if there is only stealing of 10 power banks happening from one of the box it is pilferage if there is one entire box which is stolen if there is one entire box which is stolen then i'll ask for remission i don't have to pay duty for that particular box which is stolen or whatever power banks were there in that particular box so remission of duty on goods import goods lost or destru uh, destruction of goods burden of proof of loss of destruction is on the importer here importer will have to prove that the goods are lost whereas in case of pilferage no such proof is required loss must be due to fire earthquake natural calamities and loss should be found before clearance of goods 
or home consumption before taking the delivery of this goods you should tell or uh, about this loss and it should be found then if you are relinquishing the title on the goods if there is a relinquishment of title i have imported the goods i didn't like the goods i tell i don't want the delivery of these goods i am telling that i don't want the delivery of these goods in such cases also you, you don't have to pay any custom duty if you are relinquishing the title what is this point telling the owner of any imported goods at any time before the order of clearance of goods for home consumption or before permitting the uh, depositing the goods of warehouses has made the relinquish of title of the goods then he shall not be liable to pay any custom duty he will not have to pay any custom duty if he is telling i don't want these goods whatever goods i know i, I understand i imported these goods but i relinquish my title i am relinquishing my title now when can this occur in the following cases relinquish can of title can occur goods are not according to my specification the goods have been damaged during the uh, course of voyage or there is a breach of contract between the supplier and uh, supplier the supplier has breached some contract then i will tell no 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 see this supplier has done some nonsense thing why should i uh, take these goods i am not taking the delivery of these goods next with regard to refund all see this duty labeled in certain specifications spill fridge all these are very simple topic simple 2 to 3 marks question they last very uh, so please try to understand and revise these topics because chota chota topics and important also next now i am reimporting the exported goods case of import goods are exported the goods which are exported are manufactured in india and reimported i had manufactured few goods in india i exported the goods i exported these goods now these exported goods are reimported into india for the purpose of repairs or reconstruction and the reimport is happening within 3 years then once after reimport if you are exporting it back then you don't have to pay any custom duty if they are reexported within a period of 6 months after doing all that repairs etc if you are reexporting after 6 months you don't have to pay any custom duty and if the goods are which are exported by you which were manufactured in india they are coming back for reprocessing refining then they should then you should the, this goods should come back within one year and they should be exported within 6 months of the repairs then no duty is uh, will be required to be paid by you next goods are reimported without being subject to remanufacturing or reprocessing through melting recycling or recasting if the goods are exported under the benefit of drawback if you have exported the goods with some benefit of drawback or any refund etc then whatever amount which was given to you as a refund whatever amount was given to you as a drawback will be taken back if they are coming back and you are not exporting reimport of goods exported for repairs and there is no change in ownership so you had exported the goods you are reimporting it and the person who is exporting the goods and the person who is uh, importing the goods reimporting the goods are the same person there is no change in ownership then also you will get the benefit of a duty whichever whatever is paid by you on those goods reimport of any other exported goods you will not get any benefits you will not get any benefit and there is something called as newly added inward processing and outward processing sir what is this inward processing and outward processing if you are importing any uh, goods to india for the purpose of doing any process on those goods it is called as inward processing if you are exporting any goods outside india for the purpose of doing any processing on those goods and after that repairs or processing is done if the goods are coming back to india then exemption is given for with regard to custom duty and say if it is a case of inward processing i'll give a simple example say for example toyota is the car manufacturer located in japan he is manufacturing the car he is sending the cars to india for the purpose of painting once the painting is done these cars are going back to japan so it is called as inward processing it is called as inward processing now goods are coming to india is it treated as import sir it is not treated as import you don't have to pay a uh, custom duty that is what this inward processing and out proce uh, processing topic is telling then classification rules uh, just have a look into that not so important classification rules and one point is classification you should refer the rules of classification under customs the classification is done based on what sir hsn code there are eight digit hsn code which is given harmonized system of nomenclature eight digit hsn code will be given for each and pro every product which you are importing you should refer to the rules of a uh, classification only in case you have any ambiguity 
then there are different types of custom duty here there is one point which is very important custom duty types of custom duty sir custom duties are given where sir under uh, in customs tariff act 1975 talks about different types of customs duty first schedule of customs act tariff act 1975 talks about uh, gives the list of the rates which are applicable for imported goods second schedule talks about the rates for export goods in case of imported goods first duty which you should levy is basic custom duty that is compulsory whatever rate is given find the assessable value once you find the assessable value with that multiply whatever rate is given of basic custom duty you should levy that and compulsorily you should levy something called as social welfare surcharge please note this is on imported goods you should compulsory le levy something called as what sir social welfare surcharge this social welfare surcharge is 10 percent of basic custom duty basic custom duty is on what sir accessible value accessible value okay whereas the social welfare surcharge is on this basic custom duty 10 percent of basic custom duty then we have different types of taxes like protective duty safeguarding duty anti-dumping duty etc these three types safeguarding anti-dumping protective duties these are levied on what sir these different taxes are levied on Accessible value. These are levied on accessible value. Then we have IGST and GST compensation says this IGST and GST compensation says is levied on landed value. It is levied on what sir? Landed value into whatever rate is there. Sir, what is landed value? Landed value is nothing but your accessible value plus basic custom duty plus social welfare surcharge plus uh, protective duty, safeguarding duty, or anti dumping duty. You add all of this, you will get something called as landed value then in case of export no in case of export normally you uh, export duty is not applicable for all the products there are only few products for which they have given export duty rates sir in examination should i remember all these uh, rates which are given no 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 in examination for each and every question which they are giving you they will also tell you the rate which is applicable for uh, the rate of basic custom duty what they will not tell you is social welfare surcharge even if the question is not talking about social welfare surcharge if the goods are imported compulsorily you should levy then very important is in case you are exporting the goods no social welfare surcharge only the basic custom duty you will have to pay and other types of duties which are there but there will be no social welfare surcharge in case of what export goods other important points with regard to types of duties is what sir no IGST is required to be levied. No IGST is required to be levied if the goods which are imported, any goods like these imported goods in in India are exempt from payment of GST. Meaning what? Say for example, I am importing milk in India. If I sell milk, there is no GST applicable. So if I am importing milk, on that IGST also should not be levied. No IGST is levied on imported goods if like articles are exempted in India under GST. ITC on IGST and GST compensation uh, compensation says can be claimed by you. No custom duty on goods which are imported on temporary basis under any lease, provided that the IGST is paid on such uh, such as import of services. If you are importing anything for a, uh, for lease for a period of five years, I am importing a machinery for a period of five years on lease. I am importing machinery for a period of two years on lease. Meaning what? I am just using it for a period of two years, one years, five years, whatever the lease period is. After importing that, I am sending back these goods. These are imported only for the purpose of what? Lease purpose. They are imported only for the purpose of, uh, only for using it under a lease. So under a lease is treated as supply of services. Lease is treated as what? Services. Though goods are coming to India, it is treated as a transaction of supply of services. Because it is treated as transaction of supply of services, you will have to pay GST and not custom duty. Then very important is, what are the cases or scenarios where the Safeguarding duty will not be imposed. Very, very important question. Repeatedly they ask this question. What are the section 18 subsection B talks about safeguarding duty? What are the different scenario scenarios when the Safeguarding duty will not be levied. What are the these scenarios, sir? Safeguarding duty under section 18 subsection D is not imposed on import on is not imposed on import of following types of article what type of article if you are importing from a developing country if i am india any person in india is importing from a developing country a developing country then in such cases you don't have to pay any 
सेफ गार्डिंग ड्यूटी इफ द टोटल इम्पोर्ट फ्रॉम द डेवलपिंग कंट्री इज ओनली थ्री परसेंट और लेस देन थ्री परसेंट देन इफ यू आर इम्पोर्टिंग फ्रॉम टू और थ्री डेवलपिंग कंट्रीज वॉट सर इफ आई एम इम्पोर्टिंग फ्रॉम डेवलपिंग कंट्री वन डेवलपिंग कंट्री टू डेवलपिंग कंट्री थ्री देन इन सच केसेस इंडिविजुअली इट शुड नॉट एक्सीड थ्री परसेंट इंडिविजुअली इट शुड नॉट एक्सीड थ्री परसेंट एंड कलेक्टिवली इट शुड नॉट एक्सीड नाइन परसेंट वॉट शुड नॉट एक्सीड नाइन परसेंट और थ्री परसेंट द इम्पोर्ट फ्रॉम दो कंट्रीज डेवलपिंग कंट्रीज शुड नॉट एक्सीड नाइन परसेंट और थ्री परसेंट Sir, what does this mean, sir? Say, for example, I'll give you one example only. Say, why is this pen not working? Okay. Say, I have imported. There is a developing country, A. I have imported few products. The same products are imported by me from different countries also. Say, I have imported a pen. the same pen is been imported from different countries also from different countries developing developed countries i am importing the same type of pro, uh, products the total imports of this product into india is 1000 the total imports of this product in india is 1000 from this developing country a i have imported only 20 items totally how many imports are there of this pen in india 1000 But from developing country, how much is the imp uh, the imports which I have made? Twenty. So what is the percentage? Twenty divided by thousand. Two percent I have imported from a developing country. In such cases, this is less than or equal to three percent. This is less than three percent. Therefore, safeguarding duty will not be levied. Therefore, safeguarding duty will not be levied. Sir, what if I have imported around fifty items, sir? From the developing country, in such case, it is five percent. Should I levy safeguarding duty? Yes, you should levy safeguarding duty. This is a case when you are importing this from one developing country. Sir, what if I import from developing country A, B, C? There are three developing countries. Now they are telling individually, it should less, it should not exceed three percent. It should be less than equal to three percent, less than equal to three percent individually. And collectively, it should not exceed nine percent. Collectively, the total imports from all these countries should not exceed nine percent. Say, for example, I have imported to uh, total thousand units of pen from country one. I have imported five units from country two. I have imported ten pens from country three. I have imported forty pens from country three. I have imported what sir? Forty pens. Now see, in country one, what is the percentage sir? It is zero point five percent. Country two, what is the percentage? One percent. Country three, what is the percentage? Four percent. Now, condition number two is what? Individually, it should not exceed three percent, and collectively, it should not exceed nine percent. Sir, individually, in case number three, it is exceeding three percent. No, sir. Therefore, pay safeguarding duty only for this country, and no safeguarding duty for others. No safeguarding duty in this. Two cases only for country C because it is exceeding three percent you will have to pay safeguarding duty and for others A and B no safeguarding duty is applicable and if it is goods are imported by hundred percent E O U F T P I'll just read the provision now if the articles are originating from a developing country sir what do you mean by a developing country a developing country means one single developing country if the articles are been imported the articles are coming from where sir one single developing country so long as the share of imports of that article from that developing country does not exceed 3% of total imports of that article if you are importing from a developing country no safeguarding duty if the share does not exceed 3% of total imports if the articles are originating from more than one developing country and aggregate of the imports of developing country is less than 3% in each of the case and aggregate should not exceed 9% aggregate should not exceed 9% and let's uh, each of the case individually it should not exceed 3% and if the articles are imported by 100% eou or ft uh, ftz or special economic zone unless the duty is specially made applicable then there is something called as anti dumping duty anti dumping duty is what sir it is lower of margin of dumping or injury margin what is the injury faced by you or what is the margin of dumping which they are doing find whichever is less that will be the anti dumping duty which have to file uh, which you have to pay how do i find the margin of dumping sir what is the normal value of these goods and what is the export price meaning what at what price these goods are normally traded in that country subtract it from whatever price these goods are sold to india or exported to india that will be the margin of dumping injury margin what is the fair selling price of this product in india 
what is the normal price at which these products are sold in India subtract it by the landed value or landed value whatever price they have come to India meaning landed value is what sir uh, accessible value custom duty etc before GST on uh, whatever amount is there that is called as landed value so whatever value you find uh, find the you will get the injury margin and you will get the uh, margin of dumping find whichever is less that will be your anti-dumping duty the next is next topic important topic this is an important topic valuation under customs under customs valuation sir question number one sir what is the exchange rate which i should take sir exchange rate means what say all the imports and exports will be done in dollar sir or the question is talking about euro sir the question is talking about pound sir now i want to convert it into indian rupees so what is the exchange rate i should take if you are importing the goods if you are importing the goods and the goods which are imported by you, you are cleared for home consumption meaning what you are taking the delivery of the goods then the exchange rate which is there as on the date when you have submitted as on the date when you have submitted the bill of entry that exchange rate should be taken if they are cleared for warehousing meaning you are depositing the goods in the warehouse in such case the exchange rate which is applicable as on the date of uh, submitting into bond bill of entry what happens in case of warehouse in case of warehouse two types of bill of entry will go one is into bond bill of entry meaning i want to deposit these goods to warehouse for that one bill of entry will be there and the other is ex bond bill of entry i am taking these goods outside the warehouse export bill of entry so what is the exchange rate to be taken in case of warehouse goods into bond bill of entry uh, whatever uh, exchange rate is there as on the date of submission of into bond bill of uh, entry and in case of goods are cleared for home consumption if i am taking the delivery of the goods if i am taking the goods to my house in such cases the exchange rate as on the date of submission of bill of entry normal bill of entry in case of export goods sir shipping bill date whatever exchange rate is there on the date when you have submitted bill of export or shipping bill sir what is the duty rate sir what do you mean by duty rate the tax rate which i should take sir exchange rate i understood what is the tax rate i should take for finding the value what is the tax rate which i should take for finding the value duty rate in case of imported goods if they are cleared for home consumption if i am taking the delivery of these go imported goods then bill of entry date or entry inwards date whichever is later see bill of entry see entry inwards what have you filed later see entry inwards is given by the custom officer custom officer is going to tell please come inside entry inwards he, he will grant or take the bill of entry the date when you have filed the bill of entry whatever rate is applicable okay whatever is later out of these two different dates whoever is late meaning what sir i have filed the bill of entry on 20th of april the custom officer has granted entry inwards on 25th of april so 25th of april on that date whatever rate of duty is there that rate you should apply and pay the custom duty if the goods are wear out sir X bond bill of entry whatever rate is applicable custom duty rate is there as on date of filing of X bond bill of entry that rate will be made applicable in case of export sir in case of export whatever duty rate is up, uh, there as on the date when the let export order is given by the officer officer will tell you okay you can uh, take the goods outside india yes export is permitted so let export order on that date whatever duty rate is there that rate should be applied then in case of computation how do i compute accessible value sir I'll just explain you with a simple uh, say the uh, Africa India now there is a factory in Africa this uh, factory has manufactured some goods so whatever cost has been incurred for manufacturing and after manufacturing they'll transport these goods from factory to this port they'll transport it from the factory to the port from where these goods will be loaded to the ship and they'll come to India so whatever cost has been incurred for manufacturing plus cost of transportation from the factory till the port of export and the cost of handling loading and unloading charges whatever has been incurred for loading these goods into the ship all these three cost together okay what are the costs sir? cost of manufacture cost of transportation and handling charges or loading charges which is incurred in that country exporting country to the together are called as fob value this cost together are called as what sir fob value cost of manufacture cost of transportation from the factory of the manufacturer till the port of export and 
वॉट एवर लोडिंग चार्जेस और हैंडलिंग चार्जेस हैज बिन टेकन at the time of loading these goods into the ship so all these three different costs will be added together all these three different costs to be added together these are called as fob value sir what is fob value now these goods are freely boarded on the conveyance these are free on board now these goods are freely boarded on this conveyance meaning all the expenses has been incurred please note this is fob value but it is not the fob value for the purpose of customs for the purpose of levying custom duty this is not the fob value these goods are now freely loaded onto the ship so they are calling it as fob value but for the purpose of paying custom duty this is not fob value custom duty customs law says there are other expenses also we should which you should add to find the fob value for customs sir what if these other expenses are not there if these other expenses are zero then fob value the normal fob value will be uh, will uh, will be equal to the fob value for customs and custom duty will be levied accordingly what are the other expenses which you are talking about sir say for example for manufacturing this particular item i have incurred some designing charges design and engineering charges for uh, for getting this particular order i have got, i have paid some commission and i have packed these goods in some kind of durable uh, i have packed these goods i have incurred packing cost secondary packing etc all these different expenses which is incurred by me is also required to be added on this assessable value is also required to be added on this fob value once i add all those things i will get something called as fob value for customs fob value for customs sir why is this fob value for customs important because after these goods are loaded onto the ship the ship is going to come to india there is always a risk involved risk of for what risk of ship sinking in the territorial uh, in the waters so we will always take an insurance and there is a transportation which is happening from the exporting country port to port of india so i will incur a cost of transportation i will incur a cost of transportation so this cost of insurance cost of transportation normally whatever is given in the uh, problem that i should take what if they have not given in problem i should find the value how will i find insurance is 1.125% of fob value and uh, transportation is 20% of fob value law is telling law is given all those things but but when they say 20% of fob value or when they say 1.125% of fob value what they mean is the fob value which you should take is fob value for customs the fob value which you should take is fob value for customs meaning after adding all rule 101 additions after adding to the fob value to the normal fob value or add all the expenses which is required to be added as per rule number 10 sub rule uh, rule 10 sub rule 1 add all those things you will get fob value for customs on that fob value for customs add insurance and transportation cost you will get something called as assessable value you will get something called as assessable value it is on this assessable value you will have to pay custom duty now we'll just go through these different points which are there what are the manu- value of materials at x factory price on the factory gate of the exporter add to it freight or insurance for shipment from factory to the port whatever expenses you are incurring from your factory to the port add those expenses then handling or loading charges to port of uh, so whatever handling charges or loading charges for loading these goods into the ship whatever you are incurring at your country or exporting country add it you will get something called as fob value free on board value to this you will have to make 101 addition rule number 10 sub rule 1 additions are there these are required to be added only if they are not included and please note please note do not add any post importation expenses any expenses which is incurred by the importer after importing these goods should not be added example sir say i have imported the goods the goods have come to india in mumbai port and i am in bangalore so i incur incur a transportation cost from mumbai port to bangalore should i add it no that is post importation so not required to be added so what are rule 10 one additions i should add sir i should add all the different types of commission and brokerage which i am paying except very important i should add what sir i should add all the different types of commission and brokerage except buying commission then i should add the packing charges whatever packing cost i am incurring secondary packing primary packing packing etc except the cost of 
durable and retainable packing if the packing which you have done is durable it can be used for a uh, longer period of time and if this packing is returned to you is that the say for example the containers in which goods come they are durable and retainable packing they should not be added then development design engineering work which has been undertaken outside india should only be added if there is any engineering work designing work which has been taken outside india that should be added what if it is undertaken in india sir don't add royalty and license fee which you are paying value of subsequent resale say these goods are sold in india after uh, this uh, whenever i'm making a resale i have to pay something to the custom officer value of subsequent resale and value of material which is supplied to the exporter free of cost that should also be added that will give me what fob value for customs on this fob value for customs i will have to make rule 10 to additions what are these 10 to addition whatever freight cost you have incurred normally you should take whatever is given in the question normally you should take what whatever is given in the question sir what if question is not talking anything about freight then 20 percent of fob value for customs 20 percent of fob value for customs however in case of aeroplane if the goods are imported through aircraft maximum is 20 percent maximum if actuals are more than 20 percent also you should take 20 percent if the goods are coming through a route if the goods are imported through uh, aircraft then maximum freight charges which can be added by you is what 20 percent of fob for customs then insurance charges what sir insurance charges also you should add whatever is actually given that you should be uh, that you should add if they are not uh, not given anything should i add it sir yes you should compulsively add how much sir 1.125 percent please note these two expenses no which expenses cost of insurance and cost of freight should compulsorily be added whether they have given in the question or not if they have given whatever is given take it if they have not given for freight 20 percent for insurance 1.125 percent apart from that if there is ship demerit charges light rate charges and bar charges which they have given add it also if they have given that will give you accessible value or cif value cost insurance freight value or accessible value it is on this amount you'll have to pay customs duty sir what if fob value insurance and cost of transportation is not as available they have not given any of this meaning what they have given you cif value how will i find fob value how will i find insurance how will i find um, cost of freight etc they have given a formula cost of freight will be equal to whatever cif value is given into 20 divided by 120 cost of insurance will be equal to whatever cif value they have given into 1.125 percent divided by 120 and cost of freight uh, fob value will be cif minus cost of insurance and cost of freight now very important is this last line which i have written over here in case of in case the problem which has they have given in examination the valuation problem which they have given in the examination is about valuation of in case the valuation problem which has which they have given in the examination is about valuation of export goods valuation of export goods see the above procedure which we took cf value that is in case or accessible value we will have to find in case of imported goods in case of export goods valuation is required to be done on fob value only what is fob value add only these three items whatever we consider over no here no whatever cost of material is there transportation from the port uh, from the factory to port and handling charges add these three amount you will get fob value on that you will have to levy custom duty you should not find any cf value you should not add any post exportation expenses etc okay in case of imported goods sir do this cf value in case of export goods sir only fob value only fob value is required to be taken then what is transaction value etc Trans uh, valuation other uh, pro provisions they have given in case of identical and similar goods rule number three and uh, rule number four and rule number five is applicable what does it say sir um, in such cases i should take the value of identical or similar goods if i am taking the value of identical goods i should make sure that the country from which i am taking the value of identical goods should be the same the country of import should be same and the manufacturer also should be same if the ma same manufacturer is not manufacturing same kinds of goods then value of other manufacturer can be taken but the country should be same and the time of importation should be same this is a theoretical question normally they don't ask but some attempts say for example three four attempts once they can ask so what do you i'll just read it for you identical goods identical goods means the goods 
they, these goods are same in all respect including the physical quantity the quality of these goods and reputation of these goods except the minor differences now the method which is applicable this method which is there is applicable only in case of identical goods method whatever that is the value of identical goods can be taken only following conditions are satisfied what are the conditions identical goods are been compared with other goods of same country the country from where you are importing a goods the identical goods also should be from that country only then the goods must be value at the price which are produced by the same manufacturer meaning take the same country plus the same manufacturer if you are valuing a bajaj scooter see if the bajaj fellow is also manufacturing same kind of scooter similar kind of or identical scooter take that value sir what if bajaj fellow is not manufacturing sir what if the same manufacturing is not manufacturing such kind of scooter then you can take value of other manufacturer provided that ma other manufacturer should be in that country only same policy is there for similar goods also then rule 6 says if uh, you are not able to find value as per rule 4 and 5 then go to rule number 7 and 8 which is deductive method and computed method what is deductive method sir find the selling price of this product in india whatever selling price of this product is there in india from uh, from that subtract the po uh, whatever expenses you are incurring in india for example what sir whatever expenses has been incurred on this product after it has been imported into india uh, whatever cost you have incurred from the port to your factory whatever advertisement expenses you are incurring whatever reasonable amount of profit which you are making exclude all those things then you will get an uh, amount that amount uh, you should consider and uh, find the value of supply then computed method rule number eight computed computed method what does this rule say sir in case of computed method you will have to compute the value how will i compute the value find what is the cost which you would have incurred if you are manufacturing the same product in india once you incur those costs add to that whatever expenses would have been incurred by you if you are importing the product into india for example freight and transportation add all these expenses rule 10 2 and rule 10 1 additions you should do you will get a value that will be the cif value a residual value that is also called as best judgment assessment value wherein if you are not able to find the value as per above rules if you are not able to find the value as per above rules then find it as per residual rules what does residual rule says apply by using reasonable means with the principles uh, with the consistent under residual rule value of imported goods uh, goods shall be determined using reasonable means consistent with the principal and general provisions of these rules on the basis of data which is available in india whatever data is available in india with regard to that particular goods for take consolidate all those uh, data and find the value of this product using reasonable means which is nothing but transaction value of these goods and valuation of in case of export is also same then assessment section 17 and 18 assessment normally government will accept your self assessment whatever declaration you have made in bill of uh, entry or bill of export that self assessment duty will is required to be paid by you but however this self assessment will be verified by the proper officer not in all the cases in some cases he may verify in some cases he may not verify but in case of verification he may ask you to provide some documents for his verification purpose you provide that verification if he finds at the time of verification that no you, whatever self assessment is done by you is not correct then he'll ask you to and then he will reassess the lab, uh, liability he, he will do a reassessment he will reassess the liability once a reassessment is done if you are okay with whatever reassessment has been done by you then you are ready to pay the taxes uh, uh, of whatever reassessment is done by him then okay not a problem he will not give any order just make the payment if you don't agree with the reassessment if you don't agree with the reassessment then he will give you a speaking order asking you to pay the taxes within 15 days within 15 days he will give a speaking order so when the reassessment has been done on the contrary to the self-assessment which is against the self-assessment by the exporter or importer then the value of imported goods shall the if the importer exporter accepts the reassessment in writing no speaking order is required to be given if he does not accept then a speaking order will be given within 15 days then provisional assessment provisional assessment sir i am not able to find the value i am not able to find the value only i don't know how to do the value or officer feels that no 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 whatever value is given by you is not proper i need to do some inspection on these goods some test on these goods in such cases 
provisional assessment will be done in such cases provisional assessment provisional assessment will be done only in following cases what are the cases sir where the importer or or exporter is unable to make self assessment and he gives a request in writing where the proper officer deems it necessary that the goods are required to be subject to some chemical test or any other type of test where the importer exporter has produced all the necessary document but still the officer is not uh, satisfied or he feels that further inquiry is required to be made or where the uh, necessary documents have not been produced or information has not been furnished and the proper officer deems it to make uh, further inquiry in all such cases the proper, proper officer will ask the importer or exporter to make the payment provisionally he may ask him to make the payment provisionally as a security deposit okay so that to and he shall also ask him to furnish some security so that if there is any at the end of the day if you are liable to pay more then i will deduct it from that security i will deduct it from that security meaning what i'll just read it the proper officer may direct for provisional assessment and to furnish security uh, by the exporter or importer as as a proper officer may deem fit for the payment of deficiency if any between the duty which is finally assessed or reassessed uh, and a duty which is reassessed and the duty which is provisionally paid whatever you are provisionally paying and at final assessment if there is any difference if there is any difference for the difference payment of the difference i'll ask you to make the payment of some security deposit some security deposit now sir what if in case of final assessment whatever duty is finally assessed by the officer is more than whatever i have provisionally assessed is more than what was provisionally assessed assessed meaning you will have to pay something more now yes i will have to pay something more now at the time when you are paying this something more you also have to pay interest at 15 percent per annum when you are paying this something more because final assessment value is more than the provisional says you will have to pay something more now 15 percent interest you will have to pay from which date to which date very important this is very important repeatedly asked 15 percent interest for differential amount from the first day of the month in which duty was provisionally assessed till the date of payment thereof you will have to pay interest at 15 percent from the first day of the month say for example the uh, provisional assessment was done on 15th of may provisional assessment was done on 15th of may you made the payment of some security etc now duty when you are paying no the duty which you are paying that interest for final assessment duty is more than provisional assessed duty then you will also have to pay interest interest is required to be paid not from 15th of that uh, 15th you will have to pay it from the first day of the month that is first why sir i the provisional assessment was done on 15th no sir why should i uh, pay from the first because the provision is telling why should i not pay from 15th of that month sir because the provision is telling you will have to pay interest at 15 percent from the first day of the month in which provisional assessment was done till the date of actual payment of till the date of what sir till the date of actual uh, the final assessment or reassessment till the date of actual payment of that final assessed duty sir what if final assessed duty is less than provision they said meaning what i have paid more sir now government has to pay you now government has to pay you interest the government will pay you interest at 16 16% uh, per annum it, it will pay you interest at 16% per annum refund they will refund you the whatever excess you have paid and uh, they will have to pay interest also export and import procedure procedure is not so important what is important is bill of entry uh, details now in case of bill of entry if you are whatever goods are imported by you if you are taking delivery for home consumption then you should file the bill of entry within uh, time limit is there within one day of arrival of the uh, vessel vehicle or aircraft is required to be fined sir can i file the bill of entry before also yes you can file it uh, before within 30 days of expected arrival you can find the bill of entry say for example sir the vehicle has arrived on 20th of november you can file you should file within one day of its arrival or any time before also if you are filing before 30 days of its expected arrival i am expecting that the vehicle will come on 20th 30 days before that you can file the bill of entry expected arrival sir now sir what if i don't make the payment of duty if you don't make the payment of duty if you have done a self assessment then within one day of self assessment you'll have to make the payment of duty if uh, when should i make the payment of duty whenever i'm filing bill of entry if self assessment within one day uh, on on same day okay you submit the bill of entry the bill of entry is returned to you on the same day if the bill of entry is uh, return to you because of free assessment in case of self assessment same day you should pay in case of free assessment you will be given one day grace 
and if you have opted for deferred payment assistance then whatever date has been mentioned now if the duty is not paid within the above period interest at 15% per annum will be applicable interest at 15% per annum will be applicable for interest at 15% per annum now whenever you are calculating the number of days for the computation of interest liability exclude the days in which holidays were there for an example see i have done self assessment officer is okay with the self assessment and he has given me the uh, self as the bill of entry back to me so i should pay the duty on same day now i have done self assessment officer is not okay with the self assessment officer will do re reassessment and then he will give me the bill of entry back to me now i have one day time i should pay the, the custom duty within one day of that reassessment which is done by the <coughs> officer reassessment which is done by the officer if i don't pay within this uh, same day or one day sir then interest at 15% per annum is liable to be paid by you from which date from the date of return till the date of uh, payment actual date of payment now if you are filing the bill of entry for warehousing meaning i am not taking the delivery i am depositing the goods in the warehouse then as soon as the warehouse period is over you should make the payment of duty sir what if i don't make the payment of duty then interest at 15% per annum will have to be paid by you once that warehouse uh, warehousing period is over from the date when you have deposited the goods in that warehouse calculate 90 days after 90 days whatever period is coming from this period till the date of actual payment you should calculate number of days and pay interest at 18% per annum export procedure transit definition uh, difference duty drawback we'll discuss only the important topic duty drawback now again no theory only just important points in case of duty drawback section 74 and section 75 is there duty drawback on re export of imported goods duty drawback on use of imported goods for manufacturing some items so if you have imported some goods if you have imported some goods you didn't like these goods you are re exporting section 74 i have imported some goods i have used these goods for manufacturing of something and this item which is manufactured by me is exported section 75 section 74 talks about duty drawback in case of re export duty drawback in case of re export now in section 74 the goods which are imported can either be imported for business purpose or for other than business purpose now if it is section 74 you have imported any goods whether it is for business purpose or for personal purpose i don't care if you are pre exporting without any use not even 1% use i have done of these goods without any use i am re exporting then for you 98% duty drawback will be given whatever custom duty is paid by you 98% will be refunded to you duty drawback will be given to you if you are re exporting without use without use sir what is the time limit of re export sir normally you should re export within 2 years if this within this 2 years you are re exporting if this within this 2 years you are re exporting without any use 98% will be given so what if i use for some period and then re export then there is a percentage depending upon whether you are using it for business purpose or personal purpose they have given the rate now duty drawback on duty drawback rate on re export if the goods are imported for business purpose and re exported without any use 98% and re exported after you uh, after use then this reducing percentages are given what is reducing percent if it is used for 0 to 3 months if it used for what sir 0 to 3 months 95% of the duty which is paid by you will be given as a drawback if it is used for 3 to 6 months 85% 6 to 9 months 75% so what is happening for first 9 months 10 10 10 percent reduction is there 95% 85% and 75% first 9 month next 9 months 5% reduction is there next 9 month what sir 5% reduction is there so if it is used for 9 months between somewhere between 9 to 12 months then 70% drawback somewhere between 12 to 15 months 65% and somewhere between 15 to 18 months 60% drawback will be given to you sir what if the goods which is imported by me Oh sir, what if the goods which is imported by me are imported for personal purpose? If you are re-exporting without any use, ninety-eight percent, ninety-eight percent will be given you as duty drawback. But if you are re-exporting after an use, then reducing percentage is given. What is this reducing percent percentage? If you are re-exporting within in an in year one, quarter one, ninety-six percent, quarter two, ninety-two percent, quarter three, eighty-eight percent, eighty-four percent, year two, eighty-one. 
78, 75, etc. These rates are given. Rates are given. See, in case of year one, it is reducing by 4 percent. Year two, it is reducing by 3 percent. Year three, 2.5 percent. And year four, it is reducing by 2 percent. Meaning what, sir? Year four, quarter four is 84 percent. Reduce 3 percent from here. What will I get? 81 percent. So year two, quarter one is 85 percent, uh, 81 percent. Reduce similarly. Reduce it by 4 percent, 3 percent, 2.5 percent, and 2 percent to get the rates sir should i remember these rates remember it for first two years this is anyways for business purpose you can always remember that is not so difficult but for personal purpose it is little confusing so remember for first two years that will be sufficient then section 75 duty drawbacks on exported goods i have imported few goods i have paid duty or in uh, whenever uh, when i imported those goods i have paid customs duty now i am exporting these goods these goods which are imported by me were used for manufacturing some item this item which is manufactured by me is exported this item which i have manufactured is exported by me in such cases what will happen sir in such cases will i get duty drawback yes you will get duty drawback under section 75 uh, under section 75 what is section 75 telling see whether all industry drawback rate is available for that product see whether all industry drawback rate is available for that product yes sir it is available then apply that all, all industry drawback rate apply that all industry drawback rate whatever rate is there meaning they have a list of rates which is given for different products so apply that rate that rate is the duty drawback which will be given to you provided that it covers at least 80 percent of duty paid meaning what sir i have paid custom duty of thousand rupees and all industry rate is only 75 percent all industry rate says you are eligible for 75 percent of duty uh, duty drawback so how much am i eligible as per all industry rate 750 rupees is it covering 80 percent no sir it is covering only 75 percent i should not take all industry rate then what should i do sir i should go for special brand rate normally it will cover 80 percent okay normally it will cover the problem it will cover they'll ask you to file all industry rate what you should do whatever duty drawback is there divided by um, the actual duty import duty which is paid by you you will get all industry drawback rate all industry drawback rate is available for exported goods yes apply all industry drawback rate if it covers 80 percent of the duty paid on import else apply special brand rate sir what if all industry drawback rate is only not available apply brand rate apply brand rate then interest on drawback two cases happening i have applied for drawback government is now liable to give back me the money government is now liable to give back the money government does not give the money to me within one month from the date of making application i have made an application within one month from the date of making application government does not make the payment of drawback to me in such case government has to pay me interest at six six percent per annum from the end of one month till the date of actual payment case number two government has refunded me some amount wrongly errorlessly i was eligible only for 100 rupees say not 100 rupees 100 is very less i am was eligible eligible only for 10000 rupees government by mistake has given me 15000 rupees 5000 extra it has it has given to me i should give it back to government government will tell hey dilip i have given you 5000 rupees extra please give it back to me i should give it back to government if i don't give it back to government 15% interest i have to pay 15% interest i have to pay then section 76 negative list of duty drawback sir what is this negative list of duty drawback sir negative list of duty drawback says in this in these cases you will not get any duty drawback duty drawback will not be given to you at all in these following cases no duty drawback will be given which cases if the amount of duty drawback is less than rupees 50 then no duty drawback in case of negative sales meaning what the market price of this product if it is sold in india is more than the fob value meaning what you are exporting it for 100 rupees but if you sell the same product in india you are going to get 150 rupees this is negative sales no duty drawback if the amount of duty drawback covers one third of the market value of exported goods whatever amount of duty drawback okay negative sales is talking about the price of product here one third of the market value of the exported goods the duty drawback amount covers say the market value of these goods is 150 one third of this is what 50 if the duty drawback is around 60 rupees then i'll not give you duty drawback then duty drawback as a percentage of fob is less than one percent whatever duty drawback amount is there drawback divided by fob is less than one percent then i'll not give you duty drawback provided if the value is more than 500 i'll give you 
if the value is more than 500 meaning percentage is less than 1% and value is more than 5, 500 yes percentage is less than 1% value is also less than 500 or equal to 500 no no duty drawback will be given if sale proceeds are not realized within the time limit as prescribed by SEBI or if the duty drawback amount exceeds the market price of exported goods that is the market price of these goods in India and duty drawback is not allowed if the exporter has taken any other benefit like uh, duty entitled passbook or any other export incentives he has taken this is all about duty drawback let us discuss one more topic which is baggage rules baggage again it is not that in every attempt they ask but see customs because the syllabus is uh, i mean the examination the marks uh, the marks which they are uh, for which it is going to come is very less but the syllabus is huge you have to study a lot of things study only important things for example valuation 100 percent they'll ask some question on valuation for example drawback or baggage at least one or two attempts they'll ask a question what do you mean by baggage baggage includes unaccompanied baggage but baggage does not include what sir motor vehicle infant means what any person who, uh, any child who is not more than two years of age resident means a person having valid indian passport tourist means any person who is coming from outside india and uh, who enters india for the purpose of tourism and who is not who does not have an intention to stay for a period more than six months personal effect means whatever is used for our personal benefit or purpose now section 70, uh, 77, 78 and 79 talks about baggage. Section 79 says that the owner of the baggage should make a declaration of whatever this bag, uh, his baggage containing. Section 78 talks about the rate of baggage and it is ta talking about on which date is uh, what date I should take for customs valuation. The rate of duty and the tariff valuation applicable to the baggage shall be the rate of rate and the valuation in force as on the date when the declaration is made meaning whatever custom duties rate is applicable as on the date when you are making the declaration of that baggage that rate you should apply that exchange rate you should apply and that uh, duty rate you should apply duty rate is very simple it is 35 percent flat rate of 35 percent plus add 10 percent social welfare surcharge duty rate is what sir rate of duty is 35 percent plus 10 percent social welfare surcharge so effectively it is 38.5 percent there is an exemption if you are age is more than 18 years uh, whenever you are coming from outside India your age is more than 18 years you can get a laptop for free now bona fide lab baggage are exempted from duty to the extent specified in the rules if I am going to outside India and coming to India if I am going to India um, if I am going outside India and coming to India I am allowed to get something for free I am allowed to get something for free now if I am a person of a person who is a resident of India or a foreigner who is residing in India or I am a tourist who is of Indian origin in such cases I can get what is the free allowance which is given to me if I am coming from any place other than Nepal Bhutan and Myanmar if I am coming from any place other than Nepal Bhutan and Myanmar whatever personal effects are there whatever travel survivors are there that I can get for free apart from that I can get any other goods up to rupees 50,000 I can get any other goods up to rupees 50,000 up to rupees 50,000 if I get any other goods say for example I have purchased few clothes I have purchased few jewelry items etc up to rupees 50,000 if the value is up to rupees 50,000 then okay not a problem you can get it however other than those goods mentioned in ship annexure one if I am a tourist of Indian origin use personal belonging definitely you can get for free any other articles if you are getting to India the maximum value of those articles should be 15,000 if I am an infant infant for you there is nothing for free only uh, uh, the only thing is that you, your use personal belongings are free and there is no other benefit which will be given to you if I am coming from Nepal Bhutan and Myanmar if I am a uh, India if I am an Indian res resident or a foreigner who are residing in India or an tourist of Indian or, uh, origin use personal uh, effects free any other goods 15,000 is the limit if I am tourist of foreign origin, use personal belonging, free, any other things, 15,000. If you are coming from here, Nepal, Bhutan, and Myanmar, 15,000 is the limit. And for infants, use personal belongings is free and there is no other benefit. Note, if you are coming to India 
from Nepal, Bhutan and Myanmar through land routes, then there is no benefit which will be given to you because there is no declaration which is required to be made. So, what is Anekshar one talking about? They have given few things. Jewelry. Sir, I am going outside India. I am going to Dubai, sir. Jewelry is very cheap uh, there. So, if I get jewelry to India, is there any benefit which will be given to uh, you? Yes, there is some benefit. What is the benefit, sir? If you are a gentleman, 20 grams of jewelry you can get provided that the value of this 20 grams should not be more than 50,000. The value of this 20 grams should not be more than 50,000. Meaning what? A gentleman passenger can get jewelry up to weight of 20 grams with a value cap of 50,000 and ladies can get 40 grams with a value cap, a cap of 1 lakh rupees. Sir, what if I am getting 25 grams and the value is only 40,000? No, no, no. You cannot get. You can get maximum 20 grams, uh, 20 grams, and the value of should be of which should be less than 50,000. Even ladies, maximum you can get 40 uh, grams and the value of uh, which should be less than 1 lakh rupees. Sir, what if I am transferring a residence? Uh, what do you mean by this transfer of residence? Transfer of residence means I was residing outside India. Now completely I am going to shift to India. I was what sir residing outside India now I am going to shift completely to India I am transferring my residence in such cases is there anything any benefit which will be given to me definitely I will give you some benefit if you have stayed outside India for a period of three to six months if you have stayed outside India for a period of three to six months up to 6, 000, uh, 60 thousand rupees there is general free allowance which is given to you provided you are an Indian passenger you are an Indian uh, there is a company which has to, uh, you are you were working in a software company in India that company has told you yeah, really please go outside India for a period of three months or six months and do the work and come in such cases if you are coming back to India up to 50,000 you can get something for free I have stayed outside India for six to twelve months sir in such cases up to one lakh rupees provided you should be an Indian passenger I have stayed outside India for one year to two years between one year to two years for you the limit is 2 lakh rupees anything which you have purchased over there up to rupees 2 lakhs you can get to India Indian passenger should not uh, provided the I will give you this uh, benefit only if you are an Indian passenger and if you have not taken this benefit earlier in the last three years you have not taken the same kind of benefit sir what if I have stayed for a period above two years sir in that case fifth up to five lakh rupees the benefit will be given to me now what is important is the above general free allowances which is there is not applicable for un items which is mentioned in annexure 1, annexure 2 and annexure 3 meaning this 60,000, 1 lakh rupees, 2 lakh rupees is not applicable for these items which items sir? say for example I was stay staying outside India I had a color TV over there I am getting that color TV is that value of color TV also required to be included in 60,000? no I had a dishwasher I had a uh, uh, video home theater etc of refrigerator etc should I apply this value for all those things also no 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 this whatever items are there in this annexure they can be imported by you in case of transfer of residence in case of what's a transfer of residence this can be imported by you free of freely this can be imported by you freely now goods imported and exported by post if you are importing or exporting any goods by post or courier can I import and export goods by post or courier definitely yes what is important over here uh, what is the rate of duty and what is the date on which the rate of duty should be considered the rate of duty and the tariff value if if any applicable on the goods imported by post or courier shall be the rate and valuation in force as on the date on which the postal authorities present to the proper officer the list containing the particulars of such goods so whatever custom duty rate is applicable whatever value was of this product as on the date when the post office fellow is making a declaration is giving the list of these imported goods to the custom officer that should be taken into consideration in case of export sir export also same okay there is a proviso anyways there is a proviso sir the officer has given the list the post officer has given the list before the goods coming to India sir in such cases in such cases take take the value or the rate as on the date when these goods have come to India 
on the date of arrival of this vessel date of arrival of this vessel provided that if such goods are imported by vessel and the list of goods containing the particulars was presented before arrival of the vessel then it shall be deemed to have been presented on the date of arrival of such vessel so if the list was given before arrival, arrival then it will be deemed that this list was given to me after its arrival in case of export sir uh, the rate and valuation in force as on the date when the exporter delivers these goods to the courier agency in case of export what is the date when you have given these goods to the courier fellow that date whatever exchange rate is applicable or whatever duty rate is applicable i'll apply those rates then regulations they can make such regulations as may be required then refund of custom duty already discussed actually above no refund will be given if it is less than 100 rupees imports which is made by 100% aou if you are in, see actually we are discussing all the different points i mean this is not a summary revision actually if we generally ask me imports of imports by an 100% eou if you are in 100% eou located in india if you are what if you are in 100% eou located in india you are importing any product no custom duty is required to be paid by you no custom duty is required to be paid by you however if those imported goods if those imported goods you are selling within india you will have to pay custom duty whatever benefit was taken by you that benefit is will be taken back meaning what sir and 100% eou htp stp will be allowed to import goods without payment of basic custom duty gst would be levied on this import basic custom duty you don't have to pay but i will ask you to make the payment of gst on uh, on input goods or services used in manufacture by 100% eou and they can take input tax credit also itc can be taken itc can be used for making the payment of output tax and be claimed uh, can be claimed as refund meaning what basic custom duty straight away don't pay however gst you pay whatever gst you are paying you can take benefit also by way of what input tax credit or you can claim refund also then if you are clearing these goods in gst regime meaning what if you are clearing these goods in india you have imported few goods 100% eou what do you mean by 100% eou i will 100% export all the goods outside india however if you are exporting something to india or however if you are selling some goods in india then whatever basic custom duty benefit was given to you what you have not paid no please pay it back to me and whatever excise uh, gst which was uh, taken uh, as input tax credit now you will have to pay out, uh, output tax liability on those goods you will have to pay tax on those goods in gst regime clearance of 100% eou in a dta will attract gst besides an amount equal to 100 uh, basic custom duty exemption gst the compulsory you have to pay because you are making a sale in india apart from that you will also have to pay basic custom duty whatever exemption you had claimed earlier that is if goods are cleared by 100% eou in domestic tariff area they are liable to pay gst and basic custom duty for supplies then these topics are not applicable for ca students this is applicable only for cs and cm student now i will take only the warehousing topic other topics are all procedural aspects which is just a reading so there are three more topics which are there but we'll be covering only warehousing topic what do you mean by warehousing general discussion i'll do about warehousing now there is something called as warehousing provisions under uh, customs wherein you if you have imported for a few goods you can deposit these goods into the warehouse what will happen if i deposit these goods in the warehouse the duty liability will be extended meaning once you import if you are taking the delivery of these goods you should pay custom duty today only but if you deposit these goods in the warehouse the deferment will be there you will have to pay the custom duty once you take the delivery of these goods from the customs warehouse warehouse once you take the delivery of these goods from the customs warehouse only then you should pay custom duty please note not all the goods can be deposited in customs warehouse then what kind of goods can be deposited only those goods on which custom duty is payable can be deposited in custom uh, customs warehouse uh, point number 3 what is the time limit within which i should take the goods outside the customs warehouse in case they are imported by normal people normal uh, residents other than 100% eou uhtp stp in such cases within one year i should take back the goods outside the warehouse this can be extended for a further period of one year by acdc then if you are an 100% eou if you are an 100% eou eou in case of inputs that is normal goods time limit is 3 years and in case of capital goods time limit is 
5 years. Time limit is 5 years. Then you can do manufacturing activity in the customs warehouse. Then um, owners, what is the owner's right to lien? Meaning what benefit will an owner get when the goods are deposited in warehouse? He has right to inspect these goods. He has right to deal with the containers. He has right to sort these goods and he has right to show these goods for sale. Sir, is that goods de uh, depositing the goods in the customs warehouse free? No, 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 no. You will have to create a bond. You will have to execute a bond. This bond which you are executing should be equal to what, sir? Thrice the amount of duty. Three times of the custom duty. Whatever custom duty you are liable to pay on this goods, three times of that you will have to give a bond. Three equal to three times of the value of custom duty which is liable to be paid what do you mean by warehouse warehouse means public warehouse as license under section 57 private warehouse license under 58 and special warehouse license under section 58 a important not is no, it is not import importing feature it is important features of warehouse importer can defer the payment of custom duty by sorting the goods in a safe place importer is allowed to do manufacturing activity in bonded warehouse the time limit uh, for which these goods can remain in warehouse is one year for in normal cases uh, it is extended to three years for normal goods and five years for capital goods in case of 100 percent eou assistant commissioner can extend uh, has the license uh, has the authority to give license uh, for public and private warehouses only dutiable goods can be kept in uh, warehouses reassessment is not done once you deposit those goods in the warehouse you cannot do reassessment again and then if the goods which are not removed from warehouses within permissible time then subsequent removal will be called as improper removal what do you mean by improper removal you have deposited the goods in warehouse but you are not clearing these goods within the time limit specified it is called as improper removal you will have to execute a bond bond is required to be executed equal to thrice the amount of custom duty for depositing the goods in warehouse warehouse warehousing of goods is done by paying you will have to pay warehouse rents then uh, the license the person who is uh, taking care of the warehouse he is required to file return by 10th of next month 10th of next month in ca in case of uh, in special warehouses only these goods can be kept like uh, such as gold silver precious metals etc and goods which are meant to be uh, sold or supplied for duty free shops cancellation of warehouse warehouse license can be cancelled if you are contravening any provision officer has all the authority to cancel your uh, warehouse however he'll give one month prior notice to you before cancelling and opportunity of being heard during this cancellation proceedings are happening your warehouse license will be suspended meaning no new person can deposit the goods in the warehouse but however if the goods are oral uh, for all those importers who have already deposited the goods in warehouse uh, for them the provisions of warehousing will uh, uh, be applicable once the warehouse license is cancelled within seven days the goods should be withdrawn from the warehouse now what is the rights of owners of these goods which is deposited in warehouse he has a right to inspect the goods he has a right to deal with the containers he has a right to sort these goods and right to show these goods for sale then there is something called as warehousing without warehousing sir what is this warehousing without warehousing say for example in some cases what may happen is uh, the assessment may be delayed due to some reason the assessment of liability may be delayed due to some reason because there is a delay in assessment which is happening officer will deposit these goods in the warehouse now you have to pay warehouse rent it is not that you don't have to pay warehouse rent but you don't have to execute any bond this is called as warehousing without warehousing what is warehousing without uh, warehousing if the assessment is delayed on imported goods these goods can be stored in the public warehouse without executing bond this is called as warehousing without warehousing and removal of goods from warehouse whenever you are removing the goods from uh, warehouse you'll have to make a uh, request in a specific form and uh, these goods will be removed with one time lock one time lock will be affixed at the time of removal one time lock will be affixed by the proper officer or the license or the bond officer okay uh, other things are procedural topics you can just go through it all those things this is all from my side for this customs uh, revision please read all the chapters properly not only i mean all the different subjects which you have properly be very confident in examination don't take tension you should write the examination ten tension free only if you're writing the examination ten tension free you'll be able to concentrate properly on the examination and score well thanks a lot